One of the best history books I have ever read is Bill O'Reilly's Killing Lincoln. Mean that with no hyperbole. It is a great, great read. Um, It takes you into history. It's been on the New York Times bestseller list for I I don't know how long. And, And now Bill has released another book about killing Lincoln. I don't know why he's fascinated with killing him, making sure he's dead, making sure everybody knows he's dead. But now he's got a new one out called Lincoln's Last Days. Um, this is actually a textbook for children. Bill O'Reilly is on the phone with us. And, uh, Bill, I don't I don't know how many books you... I mean, you just come out with book after book after book. It's embarrassing, really. Yeah, I know. You're I, like a I, book factory. I hate guys who do that. I know. Um Number one, the uh, <laughs> Killing Lincoln's been on the bestseller list for 11 months. No, wow. no, Bill. Bill, hang on just a second. Ah. The way you start that is, thank you, Glenn. That's very nice of you to say that about Killing Lincoln. <laughs> we worked hard on that. <laughs> You're absolutely right, that my manner is this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, jeez. I mean, you for reading the book because uh, I know how difficult that is for you. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate the kind words. <laughs> Killing okay, Lincoln, now 11 months on the New York Times bestseller list. And the best thing about that is it drives the New York Times people absolutely crazy. They drive them nuts. Okay, right, so they're, let me, I don't know what to do. Let me, let me just say this. Um, I, I didn't read this book because it's in big print and, you know, it's mm-hmm. made for kids. And I just have to tell you, there is nothing that excites kids more than old black and white photographs <laughs> of, like, amputees from the Civil War. That's, love that's good they stuff. They love that. They love they that. Love that. Like, look at that guy I missing his arm. <laughs> and, and then you just turn the page and you're like, no, 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 but look, this is an etching of it. Right. Here, here's somebody with their legs blown off. Um, what happened is we folded Killing Lincoln into... Uh, Lincoln's Last Days, with a lot of illustrations and pictures, as you uh, pointed out. For grades 5 through 9, I I guess that would probably be the best. uh, But, you know, younger urchins can read it. No, my son would would read this and like it, and he's 8. Yeah, and I did that because, and this is what you do, too. I'm, I'm trying to get the, the younger people interested in their country, you know, somehow. Oh, I know. It's so hard Black to and do white. it. Black and white photos are the way to go. Well, it's exciting. <laughs> you know that. I mean, the whole, if they start to read it, they'll, they'll, they'll get into it. And thousands of school districts across the country are now using it as a teaching tool, and, and that's why we did it. It's not a venal project. I mean, it, it's a project to try to get children engaged, and that's what it, it's very simple. So where it comes out today, we, we hope the parents and grandparents will take a look at it, uh, even the dimmest child the dimmest and believe me i was one of those so i know exactly what that category is will at least pick it up and look at it because you've almost read this all the way through yourself i wrote it back (laughs) 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 you know i proofread it 15 times um there is one thing on page 168 that i think is um Class, if you'll open up your books to page 168. Thank you. There is a really great picture of the inside of Abraham Lincoln's jacket, the one he was killed in. I think this is one of the, the coolest facts I've ever seen on, on any article of clothing on anybody that they've ever, uh, that they've ever um, worn. Explain what it is. Well, we're basically trying to transport kids back to... We got it. Explain what's in the jacket, for the love of God. (laughs) Right. And they have to know what was happening as far as food, attire, attire, (laughs) and the whole thing. But look... You don't know what's in, you don't you don't know what's even the picture. If you want to take all this stuff out of context. You don't no no you, you don't right ahead. No no no, you don't know what's even in the picture. It, let me remind you cuz I know how I know how publishing things are. It, you you've gone through this book a billion times and then you set it away and 5 months later it comes out. So let me explain. It is the picture of the the details of the lining of his jacket. Um the lining of his jacket with that says one country one destiny. And it is, it's all sewn, the American eagle and everything is sewn, quilted inside of inside his, the jacket. inside of his jacket. And it just shows that even when he was putting on his jacket, he was thinking, how do I unite the country? Did you know, did you know, Beck, that every morning 
Lincoln got up, and the fir- you know what the first thing he did was? He didn't go to the head. He didn't have cereal. You know what the first <laughs> thing that Lincoln did when he when he uh, woke up was? No, I don't. I don't he read the Bible. He grabbed the Bible and read read about a page, maybe two pages, of something that that he uh, had marked out the night before, just to give him that kind of inspiration that kind of uh, thought in his mind. His first thought, he wanted to be spiritual. Now, Lincoln wasn't a churchgoer. He wasn't a bell ringer uh, trying to convert everybody to Christianity. But as you point out, he he was a thinker, and he he had mechanisms to generate thought process within himself. One of them was to put the sayings in his clothing. The other was to read the Bible every day. Fascinating okay. guy. It really, he was a fascinating me, individual. You compare him to the venal politicians we have now. Here's one thing that Bill O'Reilly, I bet, doesn't know. Do you know what he did not do every night? One thing he did not do every night. You just told me what he did do in the morning. You know yeah, what he, he didn't, didn't watch television. He did not watch the O'Reilly Factor. That's right. Not <laughs> once. It wasn't invented. He said, you know, I don't like that O'Reilly guy. Amazing. <laughs> He's writing books about my death. I don't like him. Why is he fascinated? Um, there is a um, uh, a letter, Bill, that um, I'd, I'd love to uh, share with you. If, you. if you would have been down here for Restoring Love, um, I brought a um, a letter out on the uh, onto the stage, and it is the it is the um, manifesto from John Wilkes Booth, and it is crazy town central. Yep. And in this manifesto, it, it was the the actual handwritten letter from him, and it was how many pages is that, Pat? Thirty wow, had to be. Yeah, had to be. It had to be 30 pages. thirty pages. And in it, um, he he starts with, "Let me be brief." And then he goes on for 30 uh, 30 pages. But uh, in it, he says, um, God knows that I love peace and I want peace. Um, But there comes a time when a man has got to do what a man has to do. Well, John Wilkes Booth, uh, you know, a a terrible racist, uh, horrible villain, um, narcissist sociopath, all of those things. One of the most and famous people in America at the time, he's an actor. But the contrast what a surprise. that we make between Booth and, and mm-hmm. Lincoln as hero and villain, that's something that will resonate with children, um, certainly because they look at the world in black and white, most kids do. Um, and that's, you know, Lincoln's last days, a lot of Booth in there. And, and some parents and teachers have said, well, do we really want to present evil that starkly to children and my answer is yes we do because children need to know there is an evil in the world and there is a a challenge um to fight it and lincoln did um and booth epitomizes the evil of slavery epitomizes the evil of uh totalitarianism and and so yeah i'm i was uncompromising in in portraying booth and in this book, because I wanted uh, the kids to know that, look, you're going to be confronted with evil in your life, and you better be prepared for it. There's a difference between presenting evil, like Hollywood right now just presents evil, and they don't give you the good side. Yeah, but they it, glorify it, evil. Right, mm-hmm. that. right. And it, they so, glorify it. And you don't get the, you don't get the, um, you don't get the contrast of good and why good is is better than, uh, than evil. Because there... There are very few people in America that Hollywood producers think are good. Okay, so now you're coming out with an- another book in October? Now listen, if I send you this book next week, because it's embargoed, no, none of the press is getting it because the press hates everything I do. Beck and I have something in common. Whatever we do, the media is going to hate it. Yes. All right. If I send you Killing Kennedy next week, because we have just a few uh, what they call galleys printed up, Will you read this book, Beck? Wow. Beck? I'm just trying to, I mean, how much of it did you Beck. actually write? Because if you wrote I it, probably the, I not. I write the whole thing. You oh, know me. No, there's not a chance. I'm going to read it. Yeah, that. you're not going to read it again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll say, you send it to me. Let, me. let me tell you something. This killing Kennedy is better than killing Lincoln. Well, I, I, honestly, I, I, I meant what I said. Um, and, and this book... He you won't even put care. it down, Beck. That means you, you're going to miss a night's sleep if I send it to you. And you want it? You want evil? You want Lee Harvey Oswald? Unbelievable what we found out about him. That's never been published before, ever. When's Killing McKinley coming out? 
<laughs> McKinley is probably uh, 2019. Really? Killing yeah, Garfield. I can't wait for Killing Garfield. That. That's gonna... Killing yeah. Garfield is, yeah. I've been waiting. Mm. You won't believe what Bill O'Reilly's found about Killing Garfield. Now, Beck, does it make you feel good to mock me? <laughs> yeah, it does. It, does. it really it does. does. It does. But then you go right ahead. Yeah, it does. Okay, the uh, the name of the book is uh, Lincoln's Last Days by uh, Bill O'Reilly and Dwight Z- John Zimmerman, who right now is going, why is my name so small and Bill O'Reilly's name so big? <laughs> um, it's uh, Lincoln's Last Days and um, it, really the best book that I have read on history is Killing Lincoln. This is the children's version of it, uh, and it's just it's it's great. It will get your kids into um, history, and will get your kids into um, into the into loving the story of of history. Send the send the book to me, Bill. I will send you uh, Kennedy. You'll have it probably tomorrow. Real quick, let me ask you on uh, politics. Odds that um, Mitt Romney wins. If the election were held tomorrow, he wins. He wow, wins. he's ahead. Wow. And the internal polling everywhere, um, and when I mean everywhere, um, he has more electoral votes. He isn't more to win. You need 272. He has more. Um, but a lot could happen in the debates and other things. The media is, is, is gearing up, and this will be the story of, of the fall. The media is gearing up for an, an unbelievable assault on Romney Ryan. Bill, We're where are you? The New York Times, NBC News. We're talking the big boys. Where are you seeing the electoral information like that? It, internal it's internal. Polling is done by both the Romney and the uh, Obama campaigns. It's kept secret. Yeah, it's this type of stuff that Dick Morris did for Clinton. Wow, that right. I mean, that's exciting. It makes sense. It makes sense by yeah. the way the it, Obama administration's moving right now. They're panicked. Well, they, I mean, I'm going to say on Monday when I get back from vacation that they're taking a look at Hillary to replace Biden. You think oh, they don't, still are? Don't, don't, no. don't, they, don't. They, they supposedly don't, did don't that the other you, day. Don't you dare after you ridiculed me on that a year ago. <laughs> don't you dare come out and say that. I didn't say they were going to. I'm uh, saying they're taking a look. No. At it. I think you I you go back and look at your files because I think you absolutely ripped me apart for that at one point and said, that's ridiculous. Well, They're I ripped you gonna... apart for everything, so I don't even have to look. <laughs> he knows he did. <laughs> yeah, I think he's I think they're in I think they're in real trouble and uh, uh They know they're in trouble too. Okay, so real quick, Israel. The there's a big push now, but this was the same thing people said before um, Bush left office. Israel's got to act, otherwise it, it'll be too late. Israel is acting like there's going to be a big push. Um, you remember what happened at the end of the Carter administration? This very scenario happened, uh, and uh, and Israel helped uh, Ronald Reagan. Hello. Yeah, uh, yeah, look. I mean, do you think I, this I don't is? I think Israel is going to do anything before the election. Uh, I talked to the ambassador the other day off TV. Um, I think that they're working pretty closely with uh, the American CIA right now, and I I could be wrong on this. It's a guess. He didn't say it, but I would. I don't think Israel is going to intrude on the U.S. election. I no. think that. Maybe shortly after the election, they'll move no matter who wins. But right now, I think Petraeus, the CIA chief, has got a kind of a gentleman's agreement with Israel that they won't (laughs) intrude on the election by attacking Iran. Okay, real quick, last question. Um, uh, Do you expect violence at either the Democrat or Republican convention? Yes, I think the move on people will try to do whatever they can do to get in the headlines and they'll um i i you know i think the cops will tamp it down but i i feel sorry for the police officers in both tampa and charlotte because i think these guys are going to you know attack them and cause as much trouble as they can okay bill best of luck i'll look for the uh, book please do send it to me all right Beck. And thanks for having me on i really bet. appreciate it all right you bet bye bye you uh, Lincoln's Last Days by Bill O'Reilly. He can't do the McKinley book because it's too soon. I, well, <laughs> or just we're, our emotions are still just uh, right there on the edge. He's working yeah. on a, too he's soon working for on um, um, killing Phyllis Diller. 
right now. Really? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> way too soon. That's way, way too soon. Yeah, yeah, way. So I said to Pat yesterday, I said, Phyllis Steeler died. And he said, you could have broken that to me more gently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, how does someone uh, in this day and age come up with a new fact about the Kennedy assassination? If he's, if he's mm-hmm. publishing if he does new have something, things that, that's about, great. I mean, that has been one of the, I mean, people have poured over every mm-hmm. little moment of Lee Harvey Oswald's life. If he's digging up new stuff on that, that's amazing. That's going to be a huge book again. We're going to have to hear about it for another year. Here is our, uh, 